Thank you very much, Mrs. Chairwoman. I'm presenting here some preliminary observations on white matter abnormalities in low-functioning autism. And I'm very happy to do it now after the previous speaker because I think that our data are quite complementary to the ones uh, described uh, just now. So thank you very much for your description. And this will allow me also to save some time cutting uh, some slides which have already been explained. We thought uh, to perform this study because uh, several authors have proposed, uh, as already mentioned, that white matter alteration might play a role in autistic disorders. We used diffusion tensor imaging in order to study white matter in low functioning autism and to look into the possible relationship between white matter abnormalities and cognitive impairment. In these uh, last years, as already mentioned before by Dr. Costanza, brain imaging has played an important role in suggesting abnormal functional brain organization in subjects with autism. In high functioning autism, magnetic resonance showed alterations of a functional anatomy of different cortical networks. So these data, together with studies showing altered white matter maturation curves in children with VTD, led to the development of a so-called underconnectivity theory, which has already been so good explained before. However, as mentioned, the main limit of this study is due to the fact that the major the majority of the published imaging studies are limited to high functioning autistic subjects. And that's why little information is still available about brain architecture and especially white matter organization in low functioning subjects who in fact represent more than 75% of the autistic disorder population. The problem is that imaging studies of low functioning subjects are extremely problematic, as also this study, I think, will highlight. Nevertheless, some years ago, our group already studied, by means of magnetoencephalography, subjects with low-functioning autism. At that time, we showed that these subjects present a dysfunction at preconscious stages of a cortical auditory discrimination suggesting some kind of involvement of a temporal pole or, or of its connection in our areas, like, for example, the orbitofrontal cortex. Such abnormalities have then been reported also by other authors. In the study I'm presenting today, we used diffusion tensor imaging and Faber tractography to explore the anatomical connectivity of the orbitofrontal cortex in low-functioning autism, as you see. We decided to use the orbitofrontal cortex as the main focus of our study, as it is believed to be involved in different cognitive domains relevant to autism, such as, for example, theory of mind, social cognition, as well as being implicated in stereotypies, in sensory integration, and so on. But while studying white matter in low-functioning autism, we wanted also to study the possible relationship between white matter abnormalities and cognitive impairment. At this point, uh, I only wanted to say a few words on diffusion magnetic resonance, but as it has already been so well explained by my previous colleague, I can jump this part and save some time for the other speakers. So what did we do in our study? We used tractography algorithms and fractional anisotropy maps to measure the integrity of white matter tracts connecting the orbitofrontal cortex with our brain regions, both in the subjects with autism and in the controls. And then we compared the two groups. Subjects participating in the study were 16 non-verbal, low-functioning young men with autistic disorders. As you can see, the mean age was, uh, sorry. 
the mean age was uh, around 29 years, so, and the range was between 18 and 28 years. The diagnosis of autism was based on TSM-4 criteria. All had a CARS score between 30 and 50. We used CARS because it was the only evaluation instrument which was common to all our subjects who underwent evaluation before, very often before the year 2005, in a time in which ADOS or AD were not, uh, were not available in Italy. IQ was assessed using the lighter international performance scale. This scale, as you know, provides a non-verbal measure of intellectual functioning. Mean non-verbal non IQ, as you can see, was around, around 47. 11 subjects had an IQ score below 50. As I mentioned before, the study of low-functioning autistic subjects poses several challenges. Magnetic resonance studies can be particularly difficult, as they necessitate that the participants lie still in the scanner for a number of minutes, or if a subject is unable to do so, he has to undergo general anesthesia. So our subjects underwent scanning under general anesthesia. But for obvious ethical reasons, this was only possible in cases in which the person had to undergo anesthesia for some other medical reasons. For example, a dental surgery, a gastroscopy, a colonoscopy, or whatever. That is why the number of our subjects is still relatively small. We included in the study also 16 neurotypical controls, as you can see, matched with our autism group on age, socioeconomic status, handedness. And all these subjects were scanned awake. And I will highlight this problem of scanning the subjects with anesthesia and the controls awake. Let's move now to the results. The mean fractional anisotropy values of the orbitofrontal networks, both in the left and in the right brain, were significantly lower in the autism group than in the control group. You can see here, it here the difference, autism group, control group. However, the difference was stronger in the left brain than in the right brain. We interpret this difference between left and right brain very carefully, as the sample size is still relatively small. Therefore, it is not clear if this is due to real differences between left and right hemisphere or not. In any case, the main issue here is that this data suggest that in autism, there might be a reduced integrity in the white matter of the connections between the orbitofrontal cortex and other brain areas. This finding I just showed here is supported also by the fact that the autism group presented significantly lower mean orbitofrontal cortex network volumes compared with controls. The volumes, the volumes are shown here in terms of voxels. So what I'd like to stress here is that, again, we have an indication of possible reduced white matter integrity in subjects with autism. 